Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see here on our channel. Reach out to me directly, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we're discussing a spectacular regulator retrograde launched back in 2013. This is the HYT-H1 Titanium Bronze, 48.8 millimeters in bronzed titanium. This timepiece is like nothing else. You can see it's large, and it's thick as well. At 18.3 millimeters thick, it's 55.7 millimeters lug to lug with a 25 millimeter spacing between the lugs. So the strap itself is proportional to this large watch. That said, it pulls a bit of a Houdini act on the wrist as it feels considerably smaller. And while I would never ordinarily claim a nearly 50 millimeter watch is suitable for a small wrist, I will say that at 15 centimeters, you can still wear this thing with a good degree of panache and comfort. First of all, it's feather light being all titanium and largely sapphire, those two things are always minimally dense, meaning the resulting watch feels considerably smaller. Eyes closed, you'd say maybe it's a 42. Let's take a look at the hardware and the software. Impressive stuff. No expense spared. A rare use of green large rectangular scale alligator leather in a semi-gloss with a monotone stitch. It's a bit like Hublot in that the strap is a hybrid of rubber on the bottom and leather on the top. You can also see that it's customized on the underside with some air pockets to let the wrist breathe and it's conforming profile so it shows no air or light between case and strap end. And it also traces the arc downward including the angular kink of the lugs. So there's excellent attention to detail there. And here as well, as the buckle itself is anything but a default design being both frosted and satinated with recesses on its flank and a little bit of polish in the hex screw used to affix it to the strap itself. There's even evacuation inside the pin, which I enjoy. There are no default designs here. Every detail is carefully thought out and there's a tremendous amount of articulation in an effort to break up the mass of the case. And I would say for the most part, the designers succeed. As with the buckle, you can see there's a little bit of frosted relief in the profile of the lugs and the lugs are highly faceted. The case band itself, as you can see, has several different articulated kinks to break up the apparent shear of its flank. And there's actually polish on the reverse side, as well as a box section to the sapphire itself. So that becomes part of the structure of the case, as well as the styling profile. There is a screw fixed shearing guard. It's basically a crown guard structure for the crown, and the crown, which features a rubber shoulder, is a screw down. Unlike the standard H1, this watch has a 100 meter water resistance, so put it on a water resistant strap and you are good to go. There's a lot to be said about this dial, but what matters most is that you are looking at a retrograding regulator. So you have a constant seconds turbine, you have the minutes at center, and then you have the hours outboard in a sapphire tube that contains two immiscible liquids. What you're actually looking at are two pumping bellows that contain reservoirs, two liquids, one neon green, the other clear. So the tube that acts as the hour conduit is never actually empty. There's always fluid. It's just a push and a pull between the two fluids. Now you can see it's a bit of a horological theater just to set the thing. And it does respond remarkably quickly. Cams drive the pumps. So the thing jumps forward with alacrity as you advance the time. Now here's where the retrograde element comes in. Once it reaches the end of its sweep, the fluid will quickly retrograde back to the beginning of its travel. And this is how a dial that is an incomplete circle and not calibrated for 24 hours manages nonetheless to depict 24 hours. You can see there's a little hiding power reserve adjacent to the hour or the minutes display and the hours display for that matter. And it traces 65 hours of manual wind power reserve. You can also see there is impressive depth to this dial with the hours themselves on a dished chapter ring. Now roll it all over and you can see that the watch is traditional Swiss watchmaking. And at its best, caliber H101, 35 joules, manual wind, 65 hour power reserve. It's braced against shock with a full balance bridge, it beats away at 28,800 vibrations per hour. And the watch is impressively specced. The crown, once pulled out, allows you to have an awful lot of fun rapidly adjusting the minutes. And you can note that the watch can be set in reverse too. You can see the meniscus retreating or advancing as I make my adjustments. The timepiece, of course, pushes through cams, the two reservoirs, so it has a conventional 8 beat per second heartbeat in a Swiss lever, even as the rest of the techno-industrial aesthetic of the movement seems dramatically removed from traditional horology. That said, don't give up on the traditional horology, because there's quite a bit of that. You can see every screw head is black polished. There is a fairly attractive mirrored beveling on the edge of every bridge, and a large Coupe de Genève over all of the bridges, with an engine turning or stippling underneath the beating balance. All of this is done in-house by HYT, which is particularly impressive because some companies build watches with three hands and a date. 
Other companies decide to completely reimagine the way time is told and take over a decade to bring their concept to market. HYT took the hard way. Now this is a timepiece that offers an awful lot as long as you're looking for a party watch, a weekend watch, an outrageous watch, an extravagant watch, and frankly a watch that veers off the beaten path of established name brands. This watch does all of those things, but it also makes you an individual. If you like to take the path less trodden, this is going to be your choice. The HYT H1 Titanium Bronze. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details. And I'm back with the HYT H1 Titanium Bronze.